Amen. 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 There you go. Thanks a million. You're very welcome. You bet. Well, good evening to everyone. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. I like this. I'm, I, I don't know. I think this is the third time I've uh, shared here through the, through the years or spoken here or whatever. It spoke many times in Perth, Australia. And Australia. Australia. I'm a guy, mate. She's a ripper. Okay. It's the first time I was here, I heard this. She's a bonza beauty ripper snorter, mate. I don't know what a Bonza Beauty Ripper Snorter is, but uh, in any event, well, okay, all right, turn to the person next to you and say, neighbor, let me take you to South Africa, okay, we're going to do a little church in South Africa, and the black churches, okay, look at him right in the eye, say, neighbor, you must be an absolutely wonderful person, because tonight, God has chosen you to sit next to me, okay. I like that. I like that. All right. Now say, now say neighbor. 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 When the Lord made you, the Lord made he you. looked at you and said, I'll never do that again. <laughs> That's true. You're unique. You're special. You're awesome. Isn't that right? I like that. I like that. Now say neighbor. God loves you, but I'm his favorite. Now, I've got to think about that one. You know, in the Bible, they have all those tribes, you know, like Girgashites and Hittites and Hivites and Mosquito Bites and Termites and all those ites, you know, those ites. You know what tribe I'm from? I'm from the tribe of favorite. All right? Come on. Turn to the person and say, I am his favorite. Okay? All right. Here we go. Now say this, neighbor. God's not mad at you. God's mad about you. I like that. See, there's only three opinions in life that matter. Number one, uh, God's opinion of you. Are you with me? Uh, and then your opinion of God. And then your opinion of yourself after knowing God's opinion of you. What others think of you is none of your business. I like that. Okay, now last one. Say, neighbor. I love you. You're perfect. Now change. Okay. There we go. I like this. This is why I am. All right. Man, oh, uh, I just got a, actually, I just got a letter from, uh, or email from John Dawson. He's somewhere in the galaxy. And uh, we did five, five conferences together one year, a few years ago. And so, know, and know some of your roots. Floyd McClung's been to my uh, church. And, and uh, we just greatly appreciated uh, YWAM through the ages. Did mega cities for Rod and Mexico City and, and all that type of stuff. So that was good. All right. Well, I want to talk tonight about a subject called, you all know it. You all know it. It's a, you've heard, if you've been in the church more than five minutes, you've heard already a uh, hundred messages on it. Um, this is, you think, you know, uh, we think we know all about some of these things, you know, but, and everybody here, uh, the Japanese, moto, 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 uh, the Japanese and so forth would uh, know all about it. Uh, uh, every nation here would know about it. I'm going to, I want to talk about something, but uh, how do you say it? I think we know about it, but I'm not sure we know about it. Are you with me? You can know something but not know it. Isn't that right? You, you can see something but not see it. You, you, can, you can cognize something but not recognize something. Hello? Uh, uh, and that's the whole idea. Many times God will open the eyes of our mind on something, but it still ha he still has to, after we, gotta get the, after, we have the, not, after we have the information, it needs to turn into a reformation so it can turn into formation. All right? <coughs> I think many of us, we have knowledge on this, but we don't have understanding. Uh, we see it, but we don't see it. 
It's like that story in the Bible, you know, where Jesus prayed for the guy who was blind. And then he said, what did you see? What do you see? And he says, well, I see men, uh, but I, I've seen them like trees. Trees. Uh, and, and, you know, he knew enough. He saw them enough to be dangerous. Uh, men don't have limbs growing out of the top of their head or bark for skin. So he knew it, but he didn't see it clearly. And then what Jesus did is he took him away and he prayed for him again. He touched him the second time. And I like what the Bible says. Then he began to see everything. What? Clearly. Tonight I want to I wanna trust the Holy Spirit. I'm not after knowledge. In fact, turn to the person next to you and say, Neighbor. Neighbor. Tell him this. You're not going to learn anything new tonight. Okay. Okay, I just, I, you know, yeah, how do you say it? Uh, what I want to do is take something you know and see the Holy Spirit move it from your head to your heart. Uh, many, you already have the eyes of your mind open this. I'm not sure many of us have the eyes of our heart. Hello? Do you realize your heart has eyes? Excuse me, you guys sing about it. Uh, uh, you know, you know that song, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to agree. I'm going to get a cup of coffee here. I'm screaming and I shouldn't do that. Some guy on the plane when I was coming here from Malaysia had a cold and I think he transferred that thing to me in Jesus name. <laughs> I don't know. So, but in any event, uh, I, I, I don't like it when those people on the planes, they have a cold right next to you and you can't get out. But in any event, how do you say it? I want to I wanna take, and this subject tonight is called, that you've all heard, is called discipleship. Hello? Discipleship. And I know many of you are being discipled and so forth, but I've, I frankly, I've been a pastor for many years and, and uh, yeah, I had a pretty big church. We started with 36 people. You know, a few years we're having services of 1,000 people or so, all right? Where our average was maybe 750, you know, for the year, for a lot of years and so forth. And we put a million dollars in missions in seven years and did all these wonderful things. So I've been in the church, but I've been concerned about something, guys. I, I think we we have a lot of information, but I'm not sure about if we have a lot of formation. Hello? And so we know about it up here, um, but we know about it, how, how do you say it? We know about it up here, but I'm not sure that it's in, <coughs> excuse me, here. And, and, you know, I love it. Once we get the aha of discipleship, once we get the, you know, when God opens the eyes of your heart, that's when what you know becomes a aha. Hello? And so what I want to get us tonight is I want to add, I hope that this is a aha moment for you. Okay, everybody say aha. aha. <laughs> I want you to turn to the person next to you, hit him on the head and go aha. <laughs> All right, let's see, if you would bring up the first PowerPoint here just a second. I want to talk about this, the guide by their side. So how, lead, how learners become what? Leaders. leaders. How learners become leaders, all right? Now, I, I'm concerned about, as I said, um, uh, when I look at the church, many times they'll say something like, Come to our discipleship class and um, learn, you know, come and, and, and you're going to be discipled in such and such a subject. And we look at it and we go into the class and here's one man doing what I'm doing right now. It's one person presenting, man or woman, presenting and they're lecturing at you. You're sitting in that chair and I would say to you that that is called teaching, not discipling. And I see it consistently. It drives me absolutely nuts because, you see, teaching is about information, but discipling is about formation through the process of revelation. So we can have transformation, transportation. So tonight, I'm going to provide the inspiration, but you have to provide the perspiration. 
Hello? So let's take how, how the guy by their side. Now this is kind of interesting, guys. I'm going to bring this out here. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to present to you. Um, this is what I do in my ministry. We have a ministry called Nation Strategy. And our job is to bring community transformation into the mainstream of Christianity. And I see, I have four levels of engagement with people. I hope you guys over here can see and I'll turn it over here, make sure you guys can. I have four levels that I engage people on here. Um, the number one is actually kind of what I'm doing tonight in a sense. I'm doing a little bit of both of these top two. This is where I go in. I'm in a uh, maybe a church or a conference or whatever and I'm case presenting. I'm like a lawyer who's presenting a case. Like community transformation has hired me to be their lawyer and I am presenting the case to you and you guys have to decide whether you're guilty or not guilty. All right, does that make sense? So it's case presenting, and that's the first level of engagement. My second level, after you present a case for community transformation, let's say to a church, and they say, excuse me, I'm interested in that, Ed. Um, then we'll go to the next level, and we'll do some various conferences and so forth. That's called teaching. Everybody say teaching. Now, you, the teaching is the, you know, that's very academic. It's not very pracademic. You know, you know the teacher, you guys have been in the profession, you know, I know what you do. You listen to that guy and it's one way communication and after he delivers that class and walks out, as far as he's concerned, he's done his job. He's delivered his lecture and it's up for you guys to uh, write it down, memorize it and, 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 and remember it long enough to pass the test and then forget it. Aha! Are, are you with me? That's called being an academic. Uh, but God wasn't a, see, God wasn't academic. God's a pracademic. He wants the word to become what? Flesh. And it moved from our head to our heart to our feet, from knowing to being to doing, from what to why to how. You know, impression without expression leads to depression. Wow. That's why most of the church is depressed. They have all this information, but no application. Hello? And so teaching is that way. And teaching, I don't like this. You see, teaching is about, uh, how do you, and case presenting is about something, I call it information. Information, okay? Now, um, it's, it's part of the process. There's nothing wrong with teaching. I'm not trying to demonize it. I'm just saying that it's not. It's part of the process. How do you say? It's the means to an end, not the end in itself. Hello? And now the next level of engagement, and this is what we do. I really like this after we teach some conferences. And then I'll go in, like right now I'm doing a, uh, the, B, the Bill Johnson Church uh, up in Michigan, you know, on uh, that he's God that runs the whole Great Lakes area, Generation 1. And, and I'm coaching those guys on how to uh, do what they do, but take it out to the community. And I'm involved, and they're calling me, and we're going back and forth all the time. They're accessing the uh, asset, if I can say it that way. You know, they're, they're taking advantage of the asset. And so I'm coaching them, but I'm still, it's like, this is like the senior coach of the All Blacks. <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You get me excited in All Blacks. I can't, you know, I know it's the, what, last week was a bad week. Australia? The Wallabies? Are you kidding me? Okay, in any event. Okay, okay, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, coaching, okay. But see, the coach of the, uh, to the, the team, any team, he, he's the senior coach, all right? And he kind of, he knows all the players a little bit. He knows what they're doing. But his job is strategy and kind of how to bring the whole thing together. But then they have this fourth, we have this fourth level of engaging guides called mentoring. Now, these are like the halfback coaches, the guys who do the running on the side, okay, in rugby. And he knows, how do you say it? His group is that specialty group. He knows all their family, their kids' names their wife's name. He knows their good strengths, weaknesses, habits, whatever. He's really involved in their life. And I would like to, chant, to uh, suggest to you today that these two here, uh, the top two are more about information, the bottom two about more about 
about formation, okay? And you know, think of the mess that was in the Corinthians church. What causes the Corinthian, what caused, we, I call it the Corinthian climate. Corinth was the, the epistle of pastoral problems. That's my seminary training, but the bissel of pastoral problems, okay? I like that. Well, isn't that a clever name? But why was it the uh, epistle of pastoral problems? Why were all the problems? What created the Corinthian climate? Uh, Paul says it in 1 Corinthians 4.15, countless teachers, no fathers or mentors. Every teacher rocking and rolling through town. And, and they, they deposit their thing in you. And then they walk off. And, but there's none of, it never, it stops right there at this level. And you got a bunch of, how do you say it? Uh, uh, people with more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> Hello? Uh, but, but, but walking around spiritual eggheads. Hello, and now, I, don't get me wrong, I have an earned doctorate, faith and culture, Phoenix University Theology, earned doctorate, my book back there, the 127,000 word church community books, my doctoral dissertation, I mean, uh, everybody from Peter Wagner, all those guys, to, uh, uh, to Timothy, Timothy George, the head of Beeson University is endorsed, I got the fundamental side of the church, the whole Holy Spirit side of the church, the, uh, the middle side of the church, the friendly seeker guys, all that, everybody loves it because it's all about the community. But what I try to do is, I want to, guys, I, I want to suggest to us that this is what we really need to uh, suggest. And in doing that, you see, the case presenting would be the 5,000 uh, that you're feeding. Teaching would be the 70. Um, coaching would be the 12. And mentoring would be the 3, if I were to say it that way. So I just want to challenge us and have us think a little bit about this today. And I want to bring this back at the end. Are you enjoying this so far? Yeah. Everybody say, dude, this rocks. Yeah. I say, tonight I found Nemo. Okay, all right. So. Okay, you're finding Nemo tonight. Okay. But let's, guys, let's go through this. Here we go. Next image, please. How learners become leaders. And this is, I'm real concerned about. Now, this uh, tonight is a little bit different look at discipleship. I want you to see this one. Next, please. So, in the next image, when you get it there. Um, <laughs> um, the, I call this message, actually, the sage on the stage or the guide by their side. Okay, the sage on the stage or the guide by their side. How you doing back there? Anybody here think the computer's saying, wake up, wake up. Okay, the guide by their side. Here we go. Whatever you want to call it, discipleship, passing the baton, mentoring, coaching, teaching, empowering, or equipping, it settles the question of who's going to carry on after you're carried off. You know, uh, it settles the question of transgenerational sustainability. Next one, please. Uh, whoops, go back. There you go. Now watch this verse, guys. The, you know the verse. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust these to faith men who will be able to teach others also. Now I want you to see something. This There's five generations in this verse. Jesus taught Paul... Paul taught Timothy. Timothy taught faithful men. Faithful men taught what? Others. Five generations. You know, in Genesis 1 and 2, there's that verse that says that the tree is designed for a per perpetual harvest. Everything that was created has the seed in them for a perpetual Perpetual, everybody say a perpetual harvest. That means it goes on. It's transgenerational. It's sustainable, if I could use the fancy words here today. Now, guys, watch this. I'm going to just give you a quick example, and then we'll go into these distinctions real quick. Doesn't like take long now. I just do have a lot of fun on the front end, and then we'll just Maxwell's silver camera is going to come down upon your head here. But uh, what I want to do is I, I want to suggest to you two organizations here, uh, and I think this is fairly true in the Western world. I want to suggest to you an organization you've heard called the YWCA, the Young Women's Christian Organization. Most of you are looking blank at me, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Then I would suggest another organization called the Salvation Army. 
Both of those started around the same time. Uh, one of them, the YWCA, didn't understand the principle of passing the but the person who started that, they started out right, they started out in the spirit, but they quickly ended up in the flesh. They lost, in fact, today in the YWCA is basically a feminist organization, and they've completely lost their, how do you say it, their whole mission, and I'm saying feminist in, in, the, in the negative sense of it, extreme feminism, stuff like that. We, we were, our church was actually, when we started in a YWCA building, we protested a, an abortion clinic, you know, and, and uh, the abortion clinic called up the YWCA and we got kicked out instantly. You know, and what I'm saying here, I want to point this out because it's a tragedy because it started out as a young women's Christian organization and today it's completely lost its bearing. Why? Because nobody passed the baton. Nobody knew how to disciple. Now check this out. Let's go to this other side here, the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army... It's still going today. You go into their church service, you're going to get a good church service. It may not be everything that you want, but basically the ABCs are going to be there. It's going to be solid, and they're still here. They're sustainable. Why? Because they understand and have a revelation on the subject of discipleship. Hello? So it's pretty powerful difference there. One's still around, the other's not. The only reason that you're here today in this place is somebody discipled somebody. See, Jesus knew that his disciples were his future. He was going back to the Father, and he was going to invest some time with others. He would spend time, but with his disciples and his inner circle, he was going to not spend time, but to invest time. Hello? And I think that this process is very important, and, it, and it's especially in YWAM and things like this, this gets really crucial. Next one, please. Let's take a look at this here. Away we go. One of the best examples of a two-way leader-learner leader relationship is Paul and Timothy. Both parties were moted engaged. You can be the best mentor ever, but if the one that you're mentoring is not engaged, guess what? Isn't that true? Many pastors, that's why Jesus took so much time selecting his disciples. He was asking two questions. Do they have the capacity and do they have the, the actually what he was asking is do they have the capacity, but then if they do, I got to bring up their competency to match their capacity. See, that's all discipleship is, is bringing up your competency. Let's say if you're a two-talent, you could be a two-talent person, a five-talent person, or a ten-talent person, but I don't care what you are, but if you're a five-talent person, I don't want you in capacity-wise, the way God made you, I don't want you operating at a one-talent level as far as your competency. Because why? You'll only exhibit one-talent behavior. You go as high. See, capacity and competency need to match one. So what mentoring is, what all this is, is bringing up a person's competency to match what God made them to be. I mean, the best you can be is God being you with God all over you. So we want to make sure that that happens. So look at this. So actually, you got to be careful who you uh, mentor, who you're engaged. Mentoring is not, not engaged. Nothing happens. You could be the most motivated learner in the world, but if your mentor is not engaged or willing, you will be adversely affected adversely, okay? To Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ our, our Lord Tim, Tim, uh, in there in this verse in Timothy. Let's take a look now um, at this thing. Here we go. Next image, police. Mentors are bridges to win tomorrow. You can be, be you, you can be better than others without coaching, but you cannot be your best without coaching. Hello? Everybody go, aha. Uh, um, look at this. Many Christians are going to be, I, I, my question is, are we going to, are you going to be, uh, you and me, are we going to be a horse or a mule? Mules don't reproduce. A horse does. 
And I'm suggesting that the reason you're here is because of a horse, not a mule. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can't be successful until you've had a successor. That's a perpetual harvest. You want to know why many people don't get promotions? It's easy. They haven't raised up a successor to take their place. You want to know how you get a promotion? Raise up somebody that's better than you and then they'll be, then they've got somebody covered. Most companies don't want to give a promotion because there's nobody can do the job better than you can. So then you get stuck and lost in space. Hello? Um, look at this. Uh, Jesus accessed his father how much? A lot. So is Jesus understood the power of a mentor. Next image, please. Now here, guys, I want to look at ten Paul, ten Paul and Timothy challenges and self-talk and mentoring or passing the baton. Let's take a look at this. Next one first. I'll explain it to you. Now look, this is Paul talking to himself. This is his self-talk to himself. And this is Timothy's self-talk. Now look at this. Paul's talking to himself. My desire, your, I'm going to actually put it in your, your desire desire to develop leaders with the intention of transitioning power and authority to them must be genuine. You must what? You must own it. Um, and look at Timothy, the way he needs to think on his part of it towards his mentor, the willingness of a Paul to invest in you, Timothy, is rare. Don't take it for granted and be what? Grateful. I like that. In other words, have a two-way um, relationship. All right? That's so important. So Paul's idea is, man, I got to give it. It's got to be genuine. It can't be a program. It can't be something that I've just learned. God's had to have opened the eyes of my heart. You could tell a real coach, God's opened the eyes of their heart, not just their head. And the same thing true with Timothy. So look at how you have, you have two sides that are both engaged. Now you've got a unity because it takes two to agree, but agreement, and two agree, then you go come into unity, and then you get abundance. Agreement, unity, abundance. That's the whole thing of the Garden of Eden. Okay, next one, please. Look at this. You must understand that leaders come in all sizes, shapes, and sizes. And Timothy's learner self-talk is, there's not a single successful leadership style. So be yourself. yourself. Hello. Now look at that. There's not a, I can show you churches. I can show you churches. It's not, a lot of people think, well, it's our good theology, why everybody's coming. Or it's a good, well, look at John MacArthur. He's a fundamentalist, dispensationalist, all that stuff, and yet he's got a huge church. And then you go to Rod Parsley, go to, he's a raving Pentecostal and a prosperity guy, and he's got a big church. And you look at, at um, Bill Hybels, and he's a, a kind of a, you know, a leader's leader type of thing, you know, and he's got a big church. And you look at Brian Houston, if Brian was not in church, he'd be a millionaire. Hello? He's high cap. You know what's drawing people? It's the gift of leadership. All of those people have the charisma, the Romans 12 charisma of leadership. Leadership is what's catching the fish today. This, your theology really doesn't matter all that much. It's people want to follow leaders and people who invest in them. Interesting, isn't it? There's not a single, you must understand leaders come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, there's not a single successful leadership style. So everybody here, be yourself. Turn to the person next to you and say, be yourself, baby. Uh, all right, there you go. Next one, please. Uh, look at this one. You will need a high, this is Paul. We're talking to the mentors here. You will need a high pain threshold if you are going to work with young leaders. Hello? <laughs> you, will, you will just, you're just going to need it. You're going to need a high pain threshold, all right? Um, because what do uh, young leaders do? What do people do? What do babies do in nappies? All right? Everybody say poop happens. Okay. Hello? So you're going to need a pot because they're going to make messes. Now watch this, watch this. You will make a lot of mistakes. You will say and do stupid things. So be... There you go. Isn't this true, guys? You in the front row? All the front row guys are going up here. Dude, dude, I just found Nemo. Okay. 
Look at that. Next one, please. Look at this. Here we go. You will be pit. Paul and Jesus and all your mentors, you will be pushed beyond your comfort zone in many areas of your life when you develop Timothy's. It may be disruptive to your current... Why? Because you're investing time in them. And they're going to be messes and you have to take them through those tough times in their life. Uh, like Abraham. You know, if you look at his growth chart, it was like... Now, he was trending up, but he had a lot of dips on his way. That, that's a standard discipleship chart, guys. Now, look at that. Okay, so your current ministry. Uh, Timothy's and learner self-talk. Like you will be in a hurry to lead, so be what? Patient. If you come in in a hurry, you're likely to go out in a hurry. Hello? So be patient. Next one, please. All right, look at this. Uh, you will need to understand that by definition, these few future leaders aren't fully... Well, they're emerging leaders. So they aren't fully developed, all right? So, look at this. Timothy, you are not a finished product, so listen and be... Choose to be teachable, not offended. Hello? So that's what, that's a mentor's job is to help you to be, all he's trying to do is put you in a position to be successful. Next one, please. Um, you must assign them meaningful, important, and significant, what? Tasks. Why? Because so they know, so the mentee, your, the one you're mentoring knows that uh, you're willing to entrust them with that. Most people, how do you say, uh, it, it takes a lot of strength to hang on. It takes, it takes even more strength to let go. Hello? And that is, uh, that's a true statement. Uh, Timothy's and learner self-talk, the work given to you uh, to do will be important. So take it. Isn't that true? See how this is a two-way relationship? It's, you know, one has to be engaged to the other. They have to both be facing one another, not facing away from one another, or have one facing the person with the other one facing the other way. Both parties need to be engaged. So that's so important that, you, that we know that, guys. The work given you will be important, so take it seriously, all right? Next one, please. I like this. I just think this is, I just came up with this, I, this kind of weird thing, you know, just because I thought maybe we can do better. Um, uh, Paul, you should be their guard wall, not the wall. And I think many times when people start, when the mentors start to do good and all that, many times it becomes a threat to the uh, mentor and all of a sudden they uh, uh, shut it down or whatever, you know. Be a blessing, not a barrier. In other words, at some point, that, as that mentor, that mentor person or mentee starts to grow, that disciple starts to grow and get pretty good, you know what? Um, that's what you want. That's your victory. The victory of one is the victory of many. But a lot of people get threatened then and that type of stuff, okay? Now look at this. Your mentor is there to protect you, so be coachable. Next one, please. Um, uh, you need to be their cheerleader. Encourage them. And I wish I had a couple cheerleaders at certain times in my life. I had to go find other people. I, I had some people who wanted to mentor me, and they were no more interested in mentoring me than the man in the moon. And so, and by, you know, uh, the same thing is probably some true people say that of me toward them too. But I, I had to find somebody that, how do you say, would encourage me, you know, I'd not discourage me. Uh, Timothy, leader, self-talk, you need an advocate, so be faithful. Guys, I'm giving you keys here to be a really good either mentor or a mentee, if a disciple, if I can, a discipler or a disciple okay? Next one, please. Um, you are currently designing and planning the organization they will inherit. Give them a place at the... Ooh. It's their generation. So make sure that they have a say-so in that, all right? So they can have buy-in and so forth. Timothy, learn her self-talk. You are being given a unique opportunity, so be respectful when you get a place at the 
table. It's not very often that that happens, all right? So give them place at the table. Include them in on those elder meetings and all those other things. Next one, please. Last one. Here we go. You will lose good men, maybe even the best men, if you don't do this. Hello? Uh, I think that's enough said. Timothy, learner self-talk, you will be in a better environment to learn and grow if you hang in there. So be loyal, all right? So guys, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to just kind of show us today. Is, and I think if we could enter into the reality of this, I can give the guys an outline on this or whatever you want one. But I think if, we, if as you are a disciple here, uh, remember you're part of this. Be, you know, all the things I said there. If you're the discipler here, remember you're part of this. And you know what? How do you say it? If each one does their part, things won't come apart. Hello? You won't end up as the YWCA. You'll be more like the Salvation Army. Now, one final drawing here and then I'm done. Have you enjoyed this tonight? I mean, I could have inspired you all night, but you guys, uh, I just felt like this is what God wanted us to, for some reason, you think God wanted this tonight a little bit? Just, all I'm trying to do is put you in a position to be successful. Now, watch this, whoops. I just want to show you one more thing. The whole idea of a disciple is to move from a parent-child parent relationship to an adult-adult relationship. Um, let's see what I do with that. I think I took it over here, didn't I? There it is. Thank you so much, Ben. Now watch this. Let's, I'm going to do a little chart here. Now let's say this is your mentor. Is, is, is up here. You're, and you know, and you're starting here. And as you get discipled, mentored, whatever you want to call it, you're going to start, you're going to be growing closer and closer as long as you're willing to stick it out, you know, as to hang in there in that relationship. You're going to be growing closer and closer and closer. Now, I'm going to call this a line of relationship, okay? Relationship. I don't know, it's not very, wrote, written very well. <laughs> relationship, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, watch this, and this happens so often, guys, today in these situations. Um, the guys are growing and growing, and that's great. The Timothy's growing, and pretty soon, man, here he is getting rid. Here he is, the pastor at the church of Ephesus. Now, if you're like many Timothys, a lot of guys keep going, and in their minds, they think they've grown way past Paul. Way past their mentor. Now this is the scary part because, because what happens is right here, it's, this can start to kick in. P-R what? I-D-E. The only difference between run and ruin is I. Okay? You got to be quick. Okay. Uh, pride. And, and, and right now, many, many mentors, what they'll do, is it Richard? Richard? Okay, Richard. What many they'll do is they'll uh, they'll call this guy when he goes past him and doesn't want to, you know, starts being critical of some of the things they did and all that kind of stuff. Then he'll call him Jezebel. He'll call him a rebel. Now, this guy, you have to be really careful right here because if you react to this person here at this point, you're gonna you'll just send him off into orbit. And so, but if you just kind of hang in there, understand that, uh, how do you say it? God, uh, if, if, he, if, he, if he chastened you, he'll probably chasten that guy too. Are you with me? So what will be hand to happen is this guy will get up here and then he'll have a few failures. And then hopefully he'll kind of come down. And it's, of course, we want the trend to be always growing up spiritually. But on the relationship, he'll probably come back down, see that you know a few things after all. And then you can have a great uh, a relationship the rest of the way through. But down here, when it's up here, it's like this is the parent and this is the child. Okay, spiritually I'm talking about. When you get up here and like this, now you have an adult, adult relationship. My son, I've got a 25-year-old son getting his doctorate in geophysics here in December. 
and uh, I've got a 20 year old son Matthew and he's a fireman and a medic and a captain now and uh, in the fire in, in Phoenix and right now we don't have a parent child relationship I'm his dad he's my child but our relationship is a what adult adult relationship and that's a functional relationship for where they are in this stage of life. And so that's what we're looking for. Paul was look, Paul and Timothy's thing, he called him a true child, but as he grew and so forth, it turned, went from a parent-child relationship to an adult-adult relationship. And that's called successful mentoring. Hello? And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, Neighbor. 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 If you don't listen to that American, I'm going to punch you in the nose in Jesus' name. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> it's just a joke, just a joke. Okay, I, all right. Well, guys, have you been blessed tonight? I felt like doing a little teaching tonight, too. I just didn't want to get you all hyped, you know. Let's give you a little stuff to, to chew on here, too. So, um, Mr. Richard, I'm going to turn it back over to you after I show them my books. Okay. <laughs> Listen, this, the guys, this is my doctoral dissertation. This is Church and Community. This book is, I don't know how many times it's been printed. This is the Asian version. It's printed in KL. And uh, so, I, well, we just, I just spoke at Love Singapore. We sold like 300 of these or whatever, 580 Singapore pastors. It was awesome. And uh, uh, Church at Community. And this is the whole idea of this book. If the community's not coming to church, the church has to go to the... If the insiders won't go outside, the outsiders won't go. Hello? Earth wasn't going to heaven, so heaven had to come to, to show the way. All right? So, um, in any event, I encourage you to get this book. It is a revelation on this whole subject. There's a lot of great stuff in here. It's easy to read. That's $15. Um, this, is, this book's called City Changers, When the Saints Go Marching Out. These are, the small books are $10. Um, I would encourage you to get them. It's just a very pracademic type of book on how can you be, uh, you can be an influencer in your sphere of influence, all right? Great resource for those of you that are building libraries. Nice little book, easy read, and all that type of stuff. Um, let's see, this book's called People Who Overcome. Some of you are facing huge challenges. You got a Goliath out there, you know. Uh, this book will, how do you say it, open up the giant that's in you that's bigger than the Goliath. All right, so uh, I would encourage you, turning temporary crisis into a permanent gift, turn your mess into a message. Everything works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. You know, those types of things. And uh, here's led to lead, bless to bless, love to love, led to lead. There's a leader inside of you who's dying to lead others through you. And this is a revelation on, this is catching the vibe of leadership. It's more of a vibration book. It's not so much art, but the heart and the vibe of leadership. Learn how to be a leader in your area of influence. And I just have one of these left. This is called Learning How to Trust. This is $20 if you're trust impaired. This is my, this is my most famous book. I think the close to 40,000 these sold. Destiny Image book. And uh, if you know somebody's having trust issues, this will move them from trust impaired to trust repaired to trust prepared. And there you go. I'll be back there. Guys, God bless you. Thanks for letting me share with you. Have a great Friday night. I'm turning it back over to you, Richard.